In today's video, I'm going to be sharing four tested and proven strategies for crushing injuries in combat sports and bouncing back stronger than ever. What's going on? It's Coach Adam from Counter-Strike, where we make fight science simple. We teach combat athletes how to develop relentless cardio, build unbreakable strength, and eat like a pro, so they have the ability to dominate on the mats or in the cage. Anyone that's been training combat sports for any amount of time knows that injuries are a part of the game. And as someone that has been training in MMA for two decades, coached hundreds of athletes all around the world, I know how frustrating and sometimes depressing injuries can be. Sometimes it feels like our injury is never going to go away. And sometimes we even start to identify as our injury. And this can really not just hold us back physically from getting to where we want to be in our fight career, but it can really impact us negatively on the mental side of things too. And that's kind of why I wanted to make this video to shine a little hope on injuries for all of my fighters out here. The four strategies that we are going to talk about today are the exact strategies that we use with the athletes at Counter-Strike to help them stay on the mats and bounce back from injuries even stronger. And make sure you stick around all the way to the end because number four is going to be a game changer. Let's get it. Strategy number one to crushing your injuries is to modify your training around your injury. When I talk to combat athletes that are struggling with injuries, they are typically doing one of two things. They either take off completely from any kind of training to rest and let the injury get better and heal, or they just act like nothing's wrong and they train at the same exact intensity through that injury. Both of these methods and approaches are recipes for disaster and they're most likely going to make the injury worse. For the first example, if an athlete just rests and does nothing about the injury, yeah, they're gonna feel some temporary short-term relief. They're not using it, they're not building up the same kind of wear and tear, so it's going to start feeling better, but they're also not building any stronger. So when they do start to feel a little bit better, they go back to training at 100% intensity, injure it again, and that cycle repeats itself. On the other side of things, a lot of athletes will just push through like nothing is wrong. You're not giving your body enough time and the right exercises to allow the injury to heal. So they're just putting more wear and tear on that spot making the injury much worse. What I tell our athletes at Counter-Strike to do is modify their skill training around the injury. So maybe you just drill, you don't do any kind of live work. Maybe you just modify your game and train a little bit differently than normal to avoid the injured spot. Maybe you have a different intention when you go into training, so you're just focusing on one very specific thing. Like a good example could be, let's say you hurt your knee and now it's difficult for you, maybe you're a guard player and it's difficult for you to invert or go to lasso or, or De La Hiva. Now that knee is, is kind of messed up. Maybe you play more of a top game now and you just modify your strategy a little bit. That's just one example. So it's really important to chat with your skill coach, make sure that they understand that you're injured, be really transparent about what's going on and modify and change so you can still make progress on the mats while avoiding making the injury worse. Strategy number two, say no to certain training partners. We all have those training partners that we love to go with, but every single time we go with them, they bang, they wanna go hard. Even if you start off light, it's going to turn into a war. And those kind of training partners have a time and they have a place, but when we're dealing with an injury, it's probably not the best idea to go with the training partners and the sparring partners that just wanna fight, that just wanna go hard, or maybe they are a little bit newer, they don't necessarily understand how hard they're going and they don't have that kind of control as someone that's a little bit more experienced. So it's probably best to avoid those kind of partners as well. And it's totally okay to say no to training partners. Sometimes we feel bad or sometimes we think, oh, is this person going to judge me or is this person going to be mad at me? But at the end of the day, if they're gonna get mad at you, if they're gonna judge you, that's on them. That's not on you. Their feelings are not your responsibility. You're injured right now. Your priority is recovery from the injury. So if going with that training partner, whether you like them or not, if going with them is going to make your injury worse, then it's probably a good idea to avoid going with that training partner. Go with other people, go with people that you know are gonna be chill, that are gonna be cool, that are gonna be respectful of that injury. And then when you're back to 100%, go back to banging with those guys that you love going hard with. Strategy number three, open and honest communication with your coaches. I cannot stress enough how important communication is in any relationship, but especially the coach 
athlete relationship. Your coaches are not mind readers and your coach should want what's best for you. So if you're struggling with an injury, rather than just disappearing or just training through it and not vocalizing it to your coach, because maybe you're afraid they're gonna judge you, maybe you're afraid they're gonna get mad at you, maybe they're gonna think that you're not ready to take a fight. We create all these crazy scenarios in our mind when if you just sit down and have an open, honest, transparent dialogue conversation with your coach, coach, hey, this is the injury that I'm struggling with. This is what makes it worse. This is what I'm going to do to make it better. I'm still going to train. I just wanted to let you know and keep you in the loop. I don't want you to think that maybe I was slacking or anything like that. And I just wanted to tell you straight. That's so easy. That's so simple. Uh, you know, <laughs> I was talking to an athlete an MMA athlete one time and she was struggling with a knee injury and she started to feel bad when she was going to her gym because she had to sit out from sparring she would drill a little bit it would start to bother her and then she would sit out again and then she started to create all of these narratives in her mind all oh, the other students are judging me they're talking behind my back my coach doesn't like me anymore and i said to her have you talked to these people yet like have you had a conversation with them or are you just kind of creating these dialogues these scenarios these fantasies in your mind and it turns out she did not talk to her coaches so rather than just letting your mind run wild have a conversation with your coach it's not just going to be better for your mindset and mentally getting through the injury but it's actually going to make the physical recovery of your injury better because the people around you that are supposed to support you and care about you are all on the same page so you can act on a recovery plan even quicker even more efficiently and get back to 100 percent like that and strategy number four to crush your injuries is to focus on movement quality and strength in the weight room. Typically, an athlete gets injured because they're not strong enough to withstand the forces that impact them in the sport throughout a full range of motion. So when you maybe get hit or you fall or you get put in a submission really aggressively, your body doesn't know how to produce a high level of force through a full range of motion. So it's not able to absorb a high level of force through a full range of motion, and that's typically when injury occurs. We can avoid this by getting stronger and working through a full range of motion in the weight room. The more force you can produce through a full range of motion, the more force you can absorb through a full range of motion, and the less likely you are to get injured. Now, if you're already injured, again, getting stronger through a full range of motion in the weight room is the best way to get back on the mats injury-free. So let's say you hurt your shoulder. The best way to accelerate the recovery of that shoulder is to work the muscles that support that shoulder. So your back, your scaps, your lats, all of our rowing and our retraction exercises are going to be great options for bringing the shoulder back to 100%. Let's say you hurt your knee. Well, you're going to be wanting to make your hamstrings and your glutes and your lower back and your quad stronger, while we also make sure we maintain the mobility in our ankle and our knee and our hip. Because think about it, like you hurt a knee, you're probably going to be walking a little bit funny. That's going to put some more stress on your ankle and your hip. So it's important that we keep our ankle and our hip mobile and strong so we don't end up hurting those right we might fix the knee but then something else gets hurt so it's really important that we are consistently working the muscles and the joints also around the injury this way other parts of our body don't get hurt we can bounce back from the injury even stronger and in some cases we're in an even better place than before we got injured so those are the four proven methods that we use with our combat athletes to help them bounce back stronger if you found this super valuable if it helped hit the like button let me know down in the comments below what kind of injuries are you struggling with in combat sports i love to help you and, and kind of talk through some of those things with you and also we just dropped a brand new video you could check it out out there on how to build muscle for combat athletes if an athlete's struggling with a lot of injuries, one of the best way they can prevent injuries is by building more muscle. This is going to kind of lay the foundation for strength. So you can check out that video up there. I'll catch you next time.